Hey, what's up everybody? It's Bueller here again, and today I'm going to be covering a larger video. Um, just like all the other workshops, this will be the fifth installment, um, and this will just be mainly day trading, scalping, uh, a lot of just those smaller time frame day trading topics today. So um, if you're interested in some of these topics, I'll throw it up on the screen here now. Um, then this is definitely going to be the video for you. Uh, so if you haven't already checked out the other four, uh, we had one where Harlan covered about the, his midpoint strategy and covered a lot of good TA on that and some whole average lines. Uh, as well as some good side confirmation with his indicators. Uh, my friend Tin Man covered uh, IV, trading spreads, all that good stuff. His favorite types of spreads and how to trade them, how to look at them, how to calculate them, all that good stuff. Um, me, I covered a very large video on pattern trading and all that good stuff with price action. J Bait covered a good video on volume, and then I covered some more price action, uh, mainly bigger time frame stuff uh, so far, and then the volume video stuff, and then now this smaller time frame day trading scalping uh, workshop video. So uh, definitely a good series so far of videos, uh, and definitely going to keep it up. The next one I'll work out uh, maybe a risk reward type video or something, but. Uh, this one is going to be entirely focused on day trading and scalping. So if this is something you're focused on and we're wanting to kind of sharpen on a little more. Uh, this is definitely the video for you. So definitely leave a thumbs up on the video and let's get right into this. All right. So now that we've had our introduction and you kind of understand everything that we're going to be covering today, uh, I'm just going to kind of be myself and I'm just going to break off into all the examples I kind of prepared for today as well as just all the little topics I'm going to kind of break off into. So um, as well as so all, all that little sheet I sent before on the first video, um, it kind of shows all my notes of everything I'm looking at right now. So the, yes, these are all the topics I'm going to be covering. No, they won't. Not each of one of them will have each of their section, you know, like volume and all those other stuff. Like that'll all kind of be covered in each section as I'm covering it. So um, if you have any questions about this, please feel free to drop in them in, into the comments as well. Um, but I'll, I'll try and hammer over everything as, as best as I can. So um, I just kind of wanted to hammer over some first uh, just a few examples of something I just recently shared in my community was um, just a couple of trades here on Amazon and Peton that we took. So here on Amazon, this was the watch list levels. Uh, so preparing how we trade, um, I set up the levels, I posted the list, and we were watching above 34.52.65 for calls. Um, so you could see the 40% entry was given here above our given level. Uh, and then price ended moving. We also had a good above average volume and good rising buyer volume. So this is just kind of a little gist of how to show you guys how we trade here and be their buys. So uh, that's just kind of the basics so far. Uh, let me show you guys the next one. So as the day moves on, we like to mark our new high of day, mark more emerging candles, and we like to mark the 50% level of the breakout to the high of day. So we would, of course, mark from here to here with our FIB and get about the halfway point, um, mark our new high of day that level there and then more emerging candles just the tops of our buyers if you're not familiar with that is please check out the ta routine um, but let's move on to the next one so here we have lowering price to known level after high of day so after that high of day was marked we had dropping sellers well we had lowering volume as well so that's really good showing good support catch most likely next few candles pop up we just have slow buildup of buyers another reset candle and another break above average volume with buyers so very good sign so far you can see as we did that, that was an 80% entry. Moving back up, we have another 40% entry to another 80% entry, holding the 50% of that breakout. Uh, very, very good sign, of course, when you see the 50% of any move held. And of course, you could check these out in our previous videos. Um, but as you can see here in my other notes, buyer interest appeared over high of day with volume. Lowering sellers again, just, you know, not, you know, lowering in the sense of, you know, directly one after another, it's lowering perfectly. That's not always going to be perfect. If it's like that, awesome. Um, but as you can see, just relatively lower, as you can see in this uh, example. So, and then right after rising buyers again for more price rally. So you can see they had some fuel there to push up uh, with the rising volume. Uh, here on Piton, you can see the break below uh, my set level on the watch list, but you can see the weakness in buy or sorry, <laughs> weakness in sellers though. Weakness in buyers up here as price was rejecting the f uh, first target. As price was looking to drop further, you could see, yes, there was a fight here, but you could see sellers are definitely still in control, uh, as well as indicating with this rising seller volume right beforehand. So you could see um, sellers are in control. A battle goes on. Sellers are still in control. Okay, so that's what you're seeing right there on price. Let's see. Do you see that on volume? So sellers in control. Kind of a fight here, fight here. Sellers in control again. Not an amazing amount of strength, though. Okay, but we'll see that on the next one. Weakness in sellers towards the known price target. Time to exit. There's not enough signs for strengths for more. So what I mean by that is 
Um, yes, it looked good to go down to where 120 here, but um, as you can see, there was definitely signs showing you that it was time to get out of the trade or, yo, don't get into the trade for more of a drop. It's it's definitely not going to keep dropping. Give it a little bit more time to build up more signs um, because you can see the indications here. So, yeah, you had the rising seller volume, then you had the battle, but then you have more sellers step in. So that's what I mean by, yes, sellers are still in control, um, but not with an amazing amount of strength. So, of course, after you took your 40% entry below our watch list level, of course, you'd be taking that... Um, you, of course, you'd be taking your profits before it even started settling because, of course, you're trading the momentum of your time decaying asset, the contract you're trading, an options contract. Uh, so just kind of give you guys a little gist of how we trade in here. And what all this, you know, what I just showed you all is just the BB system. Uh, the BB system is basically using the pre-market high, the pre-market low, and previous day uh, price action information. So a big thing with how we trade and let me just zoom in on these two days here so you can see exactly what you're going to be looking for. So a big way with how we trade, just to give you another quick basic rundown, is we mark the previous day high, the previous day low. We mark our pre-market high and our pre-market low. Okay. There's also a few other levels you can mark. You know, you got your, your previous day close. So you can see price ended up closing about right there. Uh, and then we also had price open right here. So those are a couple of level, couple other levels you can mark. Of course, you don't need that in every scenario. You can see right here in this example, you didn't actually need that. But as you can see, you can see price did hold the range here on the previous day. And you can see we are st still trading within it. So what that is, is just basically a squeeze is what you're seeing is price trade inside of itself. Okay, that's all you're really seeing right here. So uh, between these levels that we day trade with, and these are very, very effective and high probability day trading levels, uh, we look for calls above the pre market highs. So above our top levels, we look for calls, and below our bottom levels, we look for puts. So if we would have taken um, price under this pre-market and under the previous day low, you know, puts would have been looking really, really good out of this range. Could have dropped a good exceptional, good exceptional amount for us to make a good amount of profit uh, on that options contract. Um, but as you can see, price rallied, made another higher low, another higher low, another higher low. Price ended up rallying, and you get a good spike in volume but also at a good spot. Again, just like pattern trading, I always tell you guys, you know, you don't just want to find a bullish engulfing randomly. You want to find at the bottom of a trend where it has even higher probability to have a good explosion above it, right? So that's what you'd be, the same exact scenario you'd be looking for right here. You'd be looking for good rising buyer interest above a good spot. You know, so now we know that this is a good spot. Now we're looking for good rising buyer interest above it. So you end up getting that here above the rising average volume as well as rising buyer back to back to back above the level here so very good interest of buyers as as it breaks that level and holds over so of course you can be looking for calls on that um, but that is basically how we trade uh, in this chat that is basically how we day trade and scalp a lot of the time you know and this is the five minute chart you know i'm personally a 10 minute trader um, there's a lot of guys in this chat that are a one minute trader one minute scalper um, and the cool thing about this system is we can all do the same thing so let's look at it like this uh, there's the last two days right last two days let's mark the high mark the low let's mark our pre-market high let's mark our pre-market low okay so we got everything set that we i mean about everything that we need set of course there's more uh, to tie into this later on that i'll show you guys in this video but uh for the main example though as you can see um there's multiple day trading opportunities here so yes there are people who can take puts um as it's breaking a level and hold it for a long period of time there's people who can take a trade from here to here in just a couple minutes um so as you can see there's going to be a lot of different trade opportunities uh, using this kind of system. So of course, it doesn't matter if you're a, just a scalper or a day trader. I think everybody can benefit from this type of price action. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Please leave a like and comment on it and I'll get into the next section. Yeah. All right. So now that we've kind of gotten past the basics of how we day trade and how we find our levels and what we're really looking for when we're getting into this is uh, and now now we can get into the types of entries. So we have two types of entries that we cover in my community, and that is the 40% entry and the 80% entry. And what that is, just levels of confidence. That isn't uh, profit percentages or anything. Um, just levels of percent uh, of of confidence. Levels of confidence. Um, so the 40% entry confidence, as you can see, is when price passes by a level or breaks the pre-market level and the movement is accompanied by a rise in volume. So that's what you were seeing when I was showing you those couple examples of price breaking, but also at a good position. And um, then the 80% confident entry is when price has already passed the pre-market level and comes back to retest the level and to confirm it is now being used in this case as resistance. That retest, that retest of that level with rising volume or continued control in price is where our patient plays pay. The patient pay, the patient play is where we often see a dramatic one directional move away from the pre-market level. Often that level of confirmation move defines the majority of the direction for the day and is continued. So as you can see in this example, 
Um, and this is from the guide, just from one of the guides that I've made in the past. Uh, so a little outdated, uh, but still very, very gold as you can see. Um, but as you can see, price ended up breaking down to have our first initial level, so kind of a riskier level to play from. Um, yes, you can get profits from it, so you kind of have to just be a little quicker with it. Um, you don't always want to be uh, patiently sitting in this. Um, and then, of course, you have your more controlled area of price where you get that retest of price where price is definitely in control by sellers here uh, just because of the positioning of where it's at. So um, good little breakdown of the types of entries we trade with this system and how we day trade in this community. But Let's get into a couple of examples of both here. So um, I, I ended up getting a couple here before I made this video. Um, so a couple little uh, examples here I'm going to do here are, let's start with SKLZ. So on SKLZ, you can see just in the past two days, using the pre, uh, the previous day high and previous day low and pre-market high, didn't even mark the pre-market low just because um, it's really only right there. So might as well just wait, a, you know, go ahead and wait for the more patient level here at the previous day low. So um, ended up seeing both examples so as you can see yes we broke the pre-market low and we broke the previous day low with a 40 percent entry but you also have that retest of where it was really just relatively lower volume and price was still in control by sellers so yes you ended up getting price closing over this level but i mean look at the volume it was just so weak you know relatively low no one's really interested in it right here uh, and then you end up getting a rise in sellers right right after so uh, price ends up tanking that new low of day and you can see price ends up cascading just slowly over time to make a newer low to the 1940s. Um, but as you can see, though, both types of entry. So you have your 40% entry, breaking the pre-market low and previous day low. And then you have your 80% entry, where price slowly had a battle and ended up retesting, showing double confirmation that sellers are definitely in control here. So um, just good little basic example here on SKLZ. Uh, we can move on to and see on the BLNK chart. BLNK ended up giving a just 40, and this is another thing too, you're not always going to get that retest. Um, so big thing here is just not being greedy. Um, a big thing I teach my chat is the staircase method. Uh, the big staircase method is just really for a few months and really just a few years even, you should take just that initial breakout to that first target. So, you know, your first trade, um, you know, for a while should just be, let me get that breakout and then I'll take it to that first few levels of, you know, wherever your targets are going to be at. We'll get into that as well. Um, and then you'll just take profit, you know, don't be too greedy, just get in, get out, but you have reasoning behind everything. So that's, that's kind of why it builds you up over time. It doesn't just build your trading confidence, but also build your trading knowledge. Uh, so, and also your account. So that's another cool thing. But as you can see here on BLNK, a very good rise in seller interest here as price was holding under the previous day low and pre-market low. So double interest there, really triple confirmation right there by the volume and the two levels that it has broken and closed under in just one candle. So very, very big move there. Um, and as you can see, just slowly cascade over time. You didn't even get that retest back up here to go over or anything. You didn't even get a, a slowly pickup to make a lower high or anything. It just stayed down. So um, very nice example there on BLNK. And then the next little example here is on CLSK. I think this one has both as well. Yep, it does. So, um, and as you can see, you know, utilizing multiple days, you know, I marked this day here just to get another level ahead of me. Uh, ended up marking my previous day high, my previous day low, and then my pre-market system, as you can see here. So let's just zoom in right here. As you can see, price did end up dropping after the first 30 minutes down below pre-market low and held that previous day low. So yes, a good scalping opportunity here, I'm sure, on the five-minute time frame, even the one-minute time frame um, from here to here, but really nothing else besides that. Um, besides that, the bigger example I wanted to show here was the fact that price held support. You got a you know relatively lower volume. There isn't really a crazy amount of volume here um, at open. So you know nothing crazy. You don't expect sellers to take that lower. You, you do see it make a new low, and you do see it pick up over average volume, but again, relatively lower volume you know look look over here to the right when the buyers end up taking it back up and another thing this is a good 80 percent entry yes um, as it's holding the previous day low with this very big bullish candle um, another big tip though is that control point you know what was the control point of this high to the low of that day you know so let's mark that 50 percent level so let's look for a candle to close over that 50 percent candle okay over that 50 percent level so right let's make it orange so we know it's a little more important Okay, price ends up closing over it. You get more rising buyer volume, and uh, so also over average volume. But two, look where it closed back in pre-market. So you're almost 50/50 again. You're almost back to square one. Square one again. Price ends up pushing back up. 40% entry on breaking out for calls. Okay, you end up not getting a retest at all, except for way up here when it does a little continuation. Um, and again, though, you know what's another tip you can see for that continuation if you don't get that retest? 
that 50% control point. So I end up marking that. And look where price ended up holding. You can see price, I'm making it orange just so we all remember the control point. You can see price ended up holding that as a support, relatively uh, lower volume. Now, what I mean by relatively lower is there is a big profit taking right here, um, but nothing really happened, you know, so not, not a big candle happened. You know, it should be in correlation with this. If you saw workshop video number four with JBake, you would know that this candle should be as big as that. Um, if it isn't, it definitely have some, has some significance to it. Uh, next candle, lower, lower, still holding, still holding next candle rising buyer price is still wanting to increase you can see even over that pre and that's why i marked that other day high uh, so you could see on that target there so even if you were to take profits there or you weren't you were looking for another re-entry you could see there's still good buyer interest here above that level so ends up taking it just a little bit higher but very good example on both types of entries there um yes it didn't give us that 80 percent entry but you could see how that concept would work right here um also if you're not you know if you're like me and you want that double confirmation you can use those orange levels like i found use, utilizing the 50 percent control points so uh, definitely check that out if you haven't checked it out in our community very big channel on that so um just to, here's a couple examples though of what i was looking at um another one i wanted to show you guys was fubo so here on fubo um, you have the previous day high, previous day low, pre-market high, pre-market low. So we got everything we need. Let's zoom in. Price ends up dropping after the first 30 minutes through both of those levels. So now we're looking really good, and it was a big increase in sellers. So, you know, how is this playable? How could we have played this? Uh, definitely on close of this candle, because if you would have been at wait at the at the close of this candle, it would really feel like you're chasing just because of how much volume has already pushed through. And what levels it has moved down to okay so it's already dropped what let's see so from 30 50 down to 20 it's already dropped over a dollar and a half that's very very big for a stock like this it's, it's only a 30 dollar stock so you can't really expect it to squeeze out a lot more than that um so really all you can do and if you didn't get that 40 percent entry is of course mark your new low of day and then if you were to any get, get any kind of seller increase through that level then yes you could play it again if not then of course you just wait and be a little more patient uh, for the next day so yes you can mark these levels uh, for the next day so so now we know for monday on or sorry tuesday i guess for fubo um above 30 20s below 29 25 is going to be looking really really good for the next day's day trading level so um there you go see already seeing an example of utilizing your uh, price information that you have from whatever day you day traded on it for the future so now i know for the future that those two levels are really good um so that's another good topic i'm going to get into next is really utilizing the levels you have already um so when days don't go so well you know when days just kind of range trade i'm going to get into that next um but a really big thing with that is just setting the levels being patient if you're someone who needs to set an alert because you have kids or have a job or just crazy stuff going on with life um you need to set alerts on your chart and you need to go get you know take care of whatever you're getting so hope this section uh, was helpful just going through these couple of examples but i'm going to get into a couple more here in a second so thank you and let's get into those so a big question um that i get asked a lot around chat and just people not from my chat you know just gen and generally just from youtube or instagram or twitter uh, people ask me you know what do you do if a stock doesn't break your range for the day um, and i tell them tough luck you know whatever it doesn't matter for that day uh, so i went back and i found some recent examples and i want to show you guys what i do when that happens so uh, a really big thing to notify or notify to note is you know what levels did they stay in between so as you can see here i marked the pre-market high the pre-market low and my previous day high so and, and my previous day low so you can see price did just kind of range trade nothing really exciting happened you know what can i do for facebook though going into the future you know, now I know this is a really good break above. So I'm going to adjust this a little, you know, make it a little more cleaner. You know, let's adjust it to that high of day, meat of the bone. So now we know above 356, calls are going to be looking good. Uh, below, and let's make this a little cleaner, just like I did at the top. Make it a little cleaner. Below 352, let's just say 85, uh, puts are going to be looking really good. So now we have a good day trade plan for the next day. So no, nothing happened, but what are we going to mark it as? void nothing has happened to it today but it's not like it's not like you know the value of this play or the significance behind these levels has just you know vanished um you know this is still a really good play we can take advantage of we just have to be a little patient so going into tuesday now i know above 356 this is going to be looking for good for calls and below 352 85 this is going to be looking really good for puts you know utilizing my previous day levels still i'm not going to erase any of them there's no need to um so 
set your day trade plan. So let's type it up, you know, above 356, below 352.85. So now I know going into tomorrow uh, that these were the levels before pre-market showed up. So depending on where this ends up tomorrow, we're going to be utilizing those levels. You know, let's go look at another example that's pretty recent, NVIDIA. NVIDIA utilizing just the BB system, um, also marking gap ranges. Let's mark that gap range. You can see price really just range traded between the pre-market low and the pre-market high, as well as just kind of fighting around and jump roping with the uh, previous day high. So you can really see, you know, just kind of range traded, you know, what can we do now? Let's make our levels a little prettier, which I don't really need to on this one, and we'll, we'll adjust our plan, you know. So now we know above 820s is going to be looking really good, and below 811s is going to be looking really good. So let's set our day trade plan. So now we have our day trade plan. We don't have to worry about that. Um, so yeah, it does kind of suck when things don't go your way. Um, you know, you don't get to day trade them. Um, but a big thing, of course, is marking your squeezes that happen between each day, marking your new high of day, your new low of day, and appreciating the levels that you already have. You know, that just because this range traded between here doesn't mean uh, these levels suck. No, these levels are still amazing, um, and we're going to utilize them still. So uh, you'll see this at chart again when I'm talking about all-time high charting, but I really just wanted to talk, give you know a good section on range trade breakout. So yes, it sucks that it didn't work out for you that first day, but you know, you still have these levels, these levels are still good. So think of it as kind of a bonus for the next time you're making your list, you know, so now you can add on Facebook and Nvidia, just based off the fact that they rain traded and were a void between your levels from a previous day that you were looking at them. So, you know, they might have sucked in, but they're still good for future opportunities. So definitely don't give up on them. Uh, but I just wanted to give a little couple minute breakdown on that. Uh, these were really only the two examples I went out and find uh, found, but you know, that's not the point. Um, you know, there's plenty of examples you'll see here as I'm going through. In which, yeah, the day was boring, but that boring day led to an exciting day. You know, I'm sure I could find plenty of them, but um, that's not the point, though. You know, but again, marking those boring days and utilizing for when um, another day happens, because then you're going to be, oh, wow, you know, I'm really glad I left those levels on there. That wasn't, you know, it's not just luck, it's reasoning. You're still utilizing reasoning and things you prepared for, you know, because, you know, the trade itself should be effortless. Uh, but the preparation behind it is truly where you are putting all the hard work, all of your mental stability behind, you know, all of your confidence behind the trade. All of it should be in the preparation, not actually when you're clicking enter or exit. Uh, entering and exiting should literally just be effortless. So uh, hopefully this part is kind of helpful, uh, but we're going to get into some more pre-market high and pre-market low breakouts. All right, so for this part, I'm just going to cover pre-market high breakouts. I'm just going to cover two charts that I've recently traded and have also gotten to really just break down a lot more for the chat. So um, it's really helpful to take from a live experience instead of taking from something I didn't actually do. So um, that's what you're seeing today in most, really, in most of my videos. I'm taking from live examples from either a past trade, a trade that I had a friend do, um, you know, something I can actually take off from, you know. It's kind of hard to go just be Captain Hindsight all the time. You know, visualizing is a big thing, but... Um, it, it, Captain Hindsight can only go so far, I guess. So again here, let's just talk about the pre-market high breakouts. Uh, so more do we have to mark? So let's mark our pre-market, I mean, I'm sorry, <laughs> our pre-market low, our pre-market high, our previous day high, and our pre previous day low. So we have our main four levels marked. Um, let's see. And again, this is really good for review. You know, it doesn't matter if I profited from this or lost on this chart. What matters is that I'm able to go back and visualize and review, you know, what happened, what, what, uh, what kind of trades happened here you know what what uh what kind of entries happen i guess is what you should go highlight uh so breakout we have buyer interest you know it's a good 40 percent breakout may maybe a little risky just because it's the first 10 minutes of the day so maybe i probably wouldn't have taken that we ended up taking the 80 percent entry uh but i'm just kind of revisualizing you know this is how you talk to yourself really you know look at the chart and visualize you know what entries are here how could i have taken this you know should i have marked my new high of day so let's see let's visualize it uh, above the pre-market high, very nice breakout. Push price pushes up, and that's why it's a forty percent entry. You can't expect it to always just rally the rest of the day. You know, sometimes it's just going to have that quick pop, drop down, then you get that retest. So, um, always awesome to take uh, profits, scale out when you do get that. But either way, mark your new high of day. Price ends up dropping back down. What kind of volume is there? You know, price is dropping, and you have relatively lowering volume. So, very nice to see as you get a good forty percent entry dropping to the support here, and then you get a good pop in buyers and again you're not always going to get like a huge pop to give you an easier signal like yo get in it's an entry um it really is a build-up phase so uh you know sellers are always quicker 
buyers are always building up. So you always have to kind of go back through and visualize. And that's what this reviewing and visualizing is for. So let's look at the volume, you know, relatively low volume all the way through. But what was the can what were the candlesticks doing? Okay, price ended up holding there, pushing above here, pushing up again. So let's see, you know, that 50% control point I was just marking. Let's say the 50% is about right there. It's about halfway of that candle. You know, that's what price ended up holding. It's very nice to see as the relatively lower volume is building. So buyers are technically winning. You know, it might not be by a lot and it might not be crazy, but that's what I just said. Buyers are slower. They're going to build up. Um, so buyers end up taking it. Price over the new level, new high of day. That's why you mark that high of day. Price ends up breaking over and you get your rise, rise in buyer volume. So rise in price, rise in volume. Very nice to see. As you can see, price ends up pushing over, holding again another midpoint, pushing over again. So very, very slow buildup going into the rest of the day. But as you can see, it's very, very hard to see these things, see these kinds of things. If you don't go back and visualize, go back and talk to yourself, go back and review the chart, um, or else you're not going to be able to do this for the next time around. So a big thing is not just marking these levels, but going back and reviewing them. A lot of the time I tell my team to hold themselves accountable. You know, So if I would have set these levels, and let's say, regardless if I trade it or not, end of day, I need to go back and review the price action so I can visualize it for the next time. So let's say I did take the trade, which we did. We take 80, we took 80 percent entry off of this pre-market high bounce because we weren't really warm with this one. It's a little too early for our blood. Uh, price ended up dropping back down, relatively lower. We said, you know, we'll take the risk if price ends up dropping back below this 138.35, we'll cut our losses. So, um, very big example there is utilizing this pre-market high breakout also as a stop loss. So if price was to drop lower, that's where we would have cut it. I would have not taken it bigger than, you know, five, six, seven percent L on that. Uh, price ended up pushing up though, and we ended up taking a very nice gain on that up to the 140s. Uh, but as you can see, you know, utilizing your levels for multiple reasons, you know, I entered that as my um, kind of more safe entry because I didn't like how early it was. And then I also utilized this as my stop loss in case price did become weaker and just drop below. So uh, we would have taken that back and just waited, you know, waited for another trade opportunity. Uh, but let's go into the next one. Amazon was the next one here. Um, as you saw that on Apple, let's look at it on app, uh, on Amazon now. So big thing here is not just pre-market high breakout, um, but also utilizing those previous day price history. So um, as you can see, yes, we have a good previous day breakout right here and right here. Um, but we also have our two day ago high that is inside of this. So we can still utilize our price history. So just like we covered on those range trade charts, you can see it here on Amazon. Um, so let's mark our new high and lows. And let's look at just the previous day. Or I'm sorry, just that uh, last day. So as you can see, breakout, or I'm sorry, <laughs> range trade inside of that relatively low volume, you know, nothing too crazy. No one's really dominating. Nothing's too crazy yet. We haven't had a candle close under or over. Uh, price ends up breaking out. Who ends up picking up an interest? Buyers. Okay, so good 40% entry. Not really an 80% entry. The only really 80% entry was about this candle right here. Um, so very, very quick 80% entry. Prices is pushing up. Uh, relatively lower vol lowering volume, I should say, as it broke above that level. So you can see it broke up, and then you can see price kind of lowered, lowered, and then it becomes relatively lower again across a co another couple of candles. That's what you want to see, that retest. So um, no, you didn't get the retest here like you would have wanted. You know, price come back up and then down and give you this 80% uh, entry to give you an easier, you know, more safe signal. Um, but it ended up doing it way up here, you know, so not where you have, would have wanted it, but what is that level? You know, that was that two day ago high, you know, so utilizing recent price history again with volume to help us navigate through this chart. So uh, very, very good uh, lowering volume, lowering seller to support and buyer breakout back above. And again, mark that new high of day. So you have double confirmation, you know, price just kind of jumped roped it here after it broke out right here. Right. So it really needs to hold the 50% of this candle and then double confirm over this high of day. What did price end up doing? Jump roping, jump roping, holding that this level one for one. And then two closing over this level here with guess what? rising buyer interest. So as you could see, multiple confirmations with just price action. So very awesome example here on Amazon. Um, and on these next few examples, I'm going to be getting into pre-market low breakouts and just the same thing as this, but for the other side. So let's get into that. This example might look a little familiar and it, it was the exact example we used in the uh, uh, beginning slides when I was kind of breaking down just the basics of the types of entries and what this system is and, you know, really just the basics of how we trade in this community uh, for day trading and scalping. But I wanted to cover over it again just because it was a really, really good example and it covers the basics of really trading the break belows. Um, so 
even if you didn't take this trade opportunity, so let's just delete this like we covered in chat. Um, a big thing to cover here when reviewing this chart, just like you saw me cover on the last two charts on Apple and Amazon, um, was the break below the pre-market low. So you have our break below here. You know, but what kind of price action is going here? So you had your candle close, and then you had two candles in which I almost promise a lot of you do these kind of trades every week too, and a lot of you guys send me this stuff. You're like, well, I entered here, and then I didn't like that price pulled up. Um, but what about candle closing, guys? You know, candle never closed above this level. You know, so sellers are still in control. And what did you have go over this level? Just wicks, you know, continuation doji. And then a good good size looking hammer going on the downside. So, you know, think of this as an ice cream cone. If you were to grab this as, you know, the cone, you know, you flip it upside down, you know, then it'd be going down more. So uh, very nice to see. If you were to flip the other, your ice cream, you know, you don't want your ice cream to fall on the ground you know so you're of course you're going to flip it you know so price is still looking good on the downside but doesn't look amazing and that's why i use this as an example earlier is because it was a really really good example on not just what is a good break below um, but it also covers you know what is a good weak sign and weakness at a level which is those w wicks for one uh and then two you didn't have an amazing strength when it did keep dropping. So yes, it did drop after it broke this level and you would have profited in this trade down to this 120s. Um, but you could see relatively lower vo lowering volume as it did keep breaking lower. So you kind of had this battle here with these reset candles after you had your rising sellers. So rising sellers, reset candles, sign of weakness in sellers. So yes, your puts are still looking good, but you should probably start taking profits as it's approaching those lower levels just because the momentum of that is going to start flipping back. Not even because it hasn't broken lower, just because it's the the buyers are holding it up a little higher each time. So you saw how it dropped here, dropped down here, then they picked it up, dropped down here, then they picked it up, you know, dropped down here, then they picked it up again. So it's, you could see it's just slowing up the momentum. So again, utilizing volume to help you on those... Uh, on those day trades, but also for your review. So uh, let's get into the other chart I prepared, which was Boeing. Boeing is a big favorite for a lot of people. Um, so I'm going to break it down on two time frames. So first on the smaller time frame on the 10 minute, you have it here, um, your pre-market high, your previous day levels, all that good stuff. Uh, but as you can see, uh, first candle was everything, you know, so this was definitely a scalper's uh, paradise, you know, but you could see the slow buildup in buyers. So uh, lowering buyer volume, as a ticket of this level, so you, so you could definitely assume a slowdown is going to happen just from those two. And then guess what? A slowdown is happening. So you're going to definitely want to remarking your new low and high of day, you know, remark those new moves as it, as it approaches to the right of the screen. And you can see just the rest of the day it really just range traded. But uh, let's see this on the five minute and see how you could have scalped it. Uh, so big trade here was below pre market low was on this candle. But let's, of course, wait another five minutes. You know, why not? break below again candle closed here so yes looking very good as it closed not just below that but also a good previous day level price ends up dropping even more yes of course you're going to be looking to take profits the first 15 minutes of the day you definitely want to be looking to take your profits a lot quicker um, on these earlier morning sessions just because this, these are times of very, high, very 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 high volatility and you're not going to really have a good sense of direction this quick so this is why I talk about the staircase method so much. So um, yes, in this trade, you would have been profitable. Um, but why the staircase method is so crucial is because it teaches you to not be so greedy. Um, so if you're going to be a scalper, you're someone who wants to take profits quick. Um, you need to be thinking no hesitation, no greed. Those are the two biggest rules in your rule book. So why I say it like that is because if you were to get into this trade and just hold forever, you would have been screwed as price picked back up on the first few candles, not even as it approached here. So let's say you entered here. Um, you would have been screwed as it was picking up here just because the momentum of your time decaying asset options contract is what's burning, not the stock price. You're not trading the stock price. You're not trading your profit loss gain of your, con of your account. You are trading that options contract. So of course you need to be taking profit as it's at its highest momentum. So as price was dropping down here, you should have been taking profits before this candle even closed. You should have been taking profits. <clears throat> so really big drop there uh, from pre-markets down to those previous day levels. But that was just a really big thing I wanted to cover. Um, just because there is a difference between day trading and scalping. Um, day trading is a little bit slower of a method. You're looking to build into positions, scale out of positions. As a scalper, you're looking to get in, get out. There is no hesitation and there shouldn't be greed. Those are your two biggest enemies is yourself, uh, the greed, and of course the hesitation. So 
That's why the reviewing is so big because then you'll be able to visualize it more in real time as it hits you and you won't be freaking out in the middle of a trade because you already need to have all of this prepared and that is why this system is so amazing. You already have all the levels on the screen before the day has even begun. You just have to make the emotional battle of, battle of waiting for things to close, navigating, watching your volume, monitoring how things are closing, where on your chart, you know, is it rising volume past a certain level, you know, so always notate that. Uh, but I hope these pre-market low breakouts and these, you know, momentum discussions kind of help you out. Uh, but let's get into the next part. So um, this little part here, and this isn't going to be like the craziest long of, longest of parts, uh, is just stop loss talk. You know, using other levels to help you stop out of a play. So a lot of people have a really big problem with this from an emotional standpoint, and that's one problem. But another people just have a problem visualizing it just in general. So that's something I want to help discuss today is how to actually, you know, use your levels to help you. So, you know, think about it from just a, a basic standpoint. You know, if you were utilizing a pre-market high to play calls, and let's say whatever happens, just like this chart in here on pens, let's say whatever happens doesn't work out, it fakes out, you know, you were wrong, um, you were greedy, whatever the problem was, um, you know, what is a good sign that you need to be out of that trade when price doesn't hold that pre-market high, you know, so where should you have been taking, you know, cutting your losses? A lot of people are like, well, I'd be cutting my losses when it breaks the pre-market system. You know, why would you wait that long though? You need to be out of this trade already. You know, it didn't hold... Uh, your trade. So let's say you were just in this, you were really excited, you were in at the first 10 minutes of the day, you like this big breakout of buyers, and you like that it held over that level in the first 10 minutes. Okay, next candle. Price ends up holding down lower. Yes, you should be out of this before this candle closes, just based off the fact of how far it ended up dropping down. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, but just from a non, a more non, more emotional standpoint, because it does sound a little bit emotional, like you should just sell it because it's dropping too quick. No, a big thing you should do, it can do is wait on the candle close. So where did where should you be waiting to cut this um, if this doesn't hold? You know, based off of the fact you were waiting for it to break above this level and this level, those should also be the two levels you cut from. So let's say you you're more of a scalper, you don't like that it it didn't hold instantly. You need to be cutting here. Okay, let's say you're more of a day trader, you were more waiting for the build up for it. You know, and it, you see it didn't hold that previous day high. You know, this isn't a bullish breakout anymore. This is back to square one. You need to be cutting here. So this is really, really big with how, where you should cut, but not just randomly with reasoning. So you can see with reasoning, you should be able to cut at a very good spot and also not lose most of your portfolio. So you shouldn't be using more than 10 or 15% of your account on these trades. So when you are taking these tiny losses, you're not really denting yourself. You're kind of um, you know, still taking a loss, yes, but you're learning from it and it doesn't feel as much of a loss as much so uh, as a lesson. So let's check out one more example here on Snap. Uh, pins is a really good example we saw last week um, and just like you see here on snap utilizing my bb system here utilizing the previous day and pre-market system you can see price did just range trade in here um, but also after price broke out above this right here you know let's say you were you were excited you liked it that looked good for calls you know price ended up coming back down and holding under here you know yes you should be out of that trade based off of your trade plan if your trade plan was at it hold that pre-market high based off your trade plan yes you shouldn't be in that trade anymore okay next thing pops up price comes back up makes a lower high okay so you have your high of day and now you have your lower high so that is bearish from an intraday standpoint okay let's check out the other side now so from pre-market here yes you've made a higher low but also just from here to here, you've made a higher low. So that is bullish. But right now, just like I covered earlier, you're squeezing, you know, so don't take each trade just because of where it closes and all of that stuff, you know, focus on the momentum, focus on what the level is. And sometimes that's why you'll see me use those more passive levels. Yes. Uh, price ended up closing. I mean, close starting above this level and closing above it, but you really have this level to worry about. Also, you can't ignore that fact. So yes, it looks good here, but you have to realize, yes, this is where the bigger breakout will happen. So of course, sometimes you want to be a little more patient and on some charts, um, instead of just getting in on the very first trade opportunity, like you see me keep showing you guys, um, you should just be a little more patient and wait those first 30 minutes, first hour, first hour, 15 minutes or so. You know, sometimes you do that and those squeezes end up panning back out. So if I was extend these to the right, you know, where was the trade? The trade was really way over here towards the end of the day, the last two hours of the day. Let's check that out. Price ended up breaking out of this squeeze with rising buyer interest. As you can see, most of this day, 
since this since this really hit up here at this high of day, you have really just had lowering volume, and then you've really had more lowering volume towards this lunchtime, which is is pretty normal um, to see it under the average volume line. You know, you should always see this up, this kind of down, and this up. You know, so you should be looking for trade opportunities there. Um, so what do we see here after squeezing those lines together? You know, after seeing price trade within itself, a true squeeze, uh, you get rising buyer volume above average volume and you're out of that squeeze. So now you're looking good for calls to that previous day high, you know, so your entire trade plan is now uh, this entire rectangle from here to here. You're not looking for this to confirm higher and go up $10 more. Again, like the staircase method, staircase method suggests, stop being greedy, don't be emotional, don't hesitate. Um, this would go under the don't be greedy scenario. You know, don't be looking to make another $10 move after this has already been squeezing for this long, after lunchtime, and you're finally getting a good trading opportunity. So again, utilizing your intraday tactics, you know, how to navigate through your price action. And this entire video, you guys have not seen me put on a single indicator. I have literally used zero indicators this entire video just to manage how to navigate through this price action and how we trade, how we enter, how we exit, what we're looking for, you know, what is a sign of weakness, what is a sign of strength, you know, answer those questions for yourself in your head tonight or when, whenever you're watching this video and, and really break that down for yourself. Go back through a couple charts, rewatch this video and visualize everything you possibly can utilizing this information. So please do that. Um, but let's get into the next section. I'm only going to cover a couple more things. Um, in which are the how to chart all time highs. Uh, I want to cover moves over the previous day close, and I want to cover the daily time frame gap strat, and then also the TA routine, in which will help you with a with other levels that this system cannot. Um, so this is giving me almost everything I need, but there's another system around this in which I can add everything else I will need. So let's get into that. Uh, so the next section I kind of want to cover on is the red to green or green to red moves over the previous day close. And what I mean by this is after some time has gone by during the day or after the initial volatility of the morning price action has moved on at least, um, you can really focus on that previous day close. This is something I like to just at least note um, when I'm looking at stuff like this. So if you ever have a heavy amount of price action, so let's mark that previous day close. That would be about right there. Uh, actually, no, I'm wrong. It'd be about right there. Sorry, just a couple cents off. Um, but as you can see, uh, price ended up dropping from this level and holding, guess what? Our previous day low. Let's mark our other pre-market system levels while we're at it. As you can see, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of in the same vicinity on this chart here on Disney. But again, utilizing another level that you can have before the day has even begun is a huge advantage, you know. So what is another level you guys can use? You know, so let's mark up some of the abbreviations you guys can use for these. Uh, so we have our pre-market high. Our pre-market low. Our previous day high. Our previous day low. I'm just marking this out so everybody has them as well. And then the two levels that I'm going to cover now are, and I really covered them on like a bunch of charts. I just wanted to make them more aware for everybody is also the previous day open. And the previous day close. The previous day close is one of my favorite levels to look at once uh, some more time has gone by. Um, a lot of the time you can trust this level to hold and give you really good confirmation after you know let's say a big a big morning has just crapped the bed for disney ends up dropping below you know previous day of close ends up just tanking super super hard um you know a big thing i like to use besides those control points is also the previous day close uh, for a move above it and again i'm not looking for a big 50 percent move 40 percent move 30 percent move or anything like that uh, again from a scalper's point of view we are just looking for a quick pop over this level to another known level you know so uh, just in this example you have your previous day close you know when it ended up dropping below your previous day close uh, and as well as your pre-market system you know where did it end up going towards it ended up going towards your pre-market not just you know not just your previous day low but that's also your open for the yesterday you know so that double adds on to that level you know this being around the previous day high and pre-market high and low makes this level more significant you know this adds on to it 
this right here adds on to it, you know, so don't think of it as taking away from the level like, oh, well, it's not the close, it's the pre-market low, you know, I'm not focused on the close right here, I'm focused on this. It, you're just adding on to it. That's okay. You know, that's amazing. You know, you just made this little area a little better. If now we know if price leaves this area, it's definitely looking to go towards that, you know, previous day open, previous day low, and lower previous day history level. So that's what we'd be looking for. Um, but again, you know, we're not looking to be fortune tellers or anything or tell the future or be Marty McFly. Uh, we're just looking to be able to point out what the highest probability move would be. Uh, so, of course, if price held under all these levels, you're going to be looking for it to go towards that previous day close. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, previous day low. Sorry, you know, price bounces off of this. You're going to be looking for it to not just confirm towards these levels. You want to see it retain this low that it made earlier, as well as return back to the levels in which it dropped from. So. Um, yes, Disney really didn't do anything all day, but really it did do something. It made a new low, but you know you wouldn't be able to know that if you just looked at it on the daily time frame. So you know being able to go back through this and review it and break it down a little more is very very helpful. Um, but these are just a couple of little notes I wanted to add on to this um, that I didn't really break down more on those other charts when I was looking at them. But the previous day open, the previous day close, these are really really big. Um, you know, if you see them add up together, don't think of them as taking away. Think of them as adding together, you know, giving more confidence behind that level. It has more crucialness to that level. Um, it's more effective. So uh, definitely mark all that up and I'll see you guys in the next section. All right. So for these next three sections, I'm going to be covering how to chart at all time highs, uh, the daily time frame gap strat, and then the using bigger time frames to help you on smaller time frame section with the TA routine. Uh, so the rest of this will be bigger time frame analysis. So if you weren't uh, you know, but again, all of this is very, very helpful for day trading and scalping. But a big part I get asked, um, a big question I get asked is, how do you chart at all time highs? And, you know, people always end up joining my chat and they end up learning about these psychological levels and stuff and the control points and gaps and all this other stuff. And, you know, a big thing with how we chart is those psychological levels, you know, and people think those are just made up or we're making them up. No, they are really big and bigger money also pay attention to them. You know, when we are moving higher, um, do you think it is just a coincidence in which price action stops at a flat number? You know, you're seeing it stop at 8, 20, 50 or at 1,000 flat, 3,000 flat. You know, it's not a coincidence. It is a definite, um, I guess you could say thing, quotation, quotation. Um, but yes, you're not crazy when you see that, that it's levels of psychology when you were witnessing that. So, you know, a big chart I want to cover it on with is NVIDIA. Um, a lot of people ask me, you know, where do you see NVIDIA going with that split news? And whenever it was around the 600, 650s, I was saying, well, think of the next crazy number you can think of, and that's probably it. You know, a lot of people said, so 700, 750, 800. Yes, you are all correct. Those are all correct numbers. Um, definitely don't be thinking, you know, after it broke above this level here, where is it going? You know, what are the next levels above 645? You have 650, 675, 700. Uh, 725, you know, 720, 7, 730, 735, 740, so on and so on. Um, so please mark these levels of psychology, not with the belief of, oh, this is definitely where it's going. Um, this is giving you kind of somewhere to poke in front of you in the dark. You know, you don't just want to walk into a wall. Um, you want to have a stick in front of you so, you know, you, know, you, you can kind of hit the wall before you run into it and smack your head on it. Um, but as you can see in this example... That's all this is. You know, we're not saying this is definitely where NVIDIA is going. It's definitely going to a thousand. Um, no, we were just saying, you know, 700, 750, 800. These are levels you can expect to be hit uh, over time. You know, after a, a stock like NVIDIA gets some split news, you know, some good catalyst like that, you know, that is definitely some good push to it. But I don't want to give you guys the false sense of you should just start charting randomly. You know, a lot of people like Fibonacci extensions, Elliott waves, you know, all these other cool things. Something that actually works for me are these levels of psychology. So if you're ever at a point on a st – like let's say it's AMD and it's at 90. Um, you're going to be looking at 95, you know, 96, 97, 98, 100. 100, 250, 105, 107, 50, 110. You know, you're going to be looking at those flat levels. Um, but as you can see here on NVIDIA, marking those levels, you can even go back and visualize these levels. You know, I, I know I didn't perfectly mark them or anything, but just looking at the levels of psychology, you can see, actually see the staircase movement up from them. So let's look just on this uptrend, you know, what's actually going on up here? You know, price is moving up. Staircase held above that level, pushed up. Staircase held above that level, pushed up. Staircase held above that level, moved up. Again, it didn't even staircase this time. It just kept going. Um, but as you can see, it is utilizing those levels of psychology uh, to do so. So let's let's go back and look at one of my favorites. Let's go look at Tesla. 
So Tesla is known for running, you know, very crazy amount, uh, very crazy amounts. A while back, I was covering a video when it was at 2,000, you know, and then it had the split. Now you can see it's at 900. Um, but you know what's going to happen next time uh, when price ends up rallying and pushes back over the 900s? You know what am I going to be looking at? Uh, well, for one, the breakout is going to happen at the top of the emerging candle from the left side. So whatever this level is, if it'll let me, right here, uh, 880 50s is really where it's going to be breaking out. 900s is, is where I would target. But you can see I've already found a good $20 scalp on the daily time frame just from the meat of the bone to the actual all-time high. So I have a good 40% entry above this 880 in the future to be looking for with double confirmation and a good first target to scale out out for a good second breakout above that 900.40. You know, but what are my levels going to be above that? Personally, um, knowing Tesla, I would do every 20, 25 bucks. So let's do 925, 950, 975 you know, a thousand and so on and so on. And therefore you have good levels ahead of you that you're not just making up and you're, you're also not just holding a position going, I wonder where it'll stop, you know? So at least this time going forward, you'll be looking at it in a good sense of, you know, levels ahead of you. You're not just holding a position with greed. Again, you hear me talking about how to take greed out of your trading in every step of this. And that is because is, is, is it is one of the most important factors of your trading is the trading psychology, the, the fear, the greed and how you can control these emotions. Um, and a really big way I like to control my emotions is through the confidence behind my charting, like the confidence behind my uh, trading abilities. And it, it is all through this preparation, which I do so and in, in which I build my confidence. So uh, definitely, you know, take all of this, you know, notate all of this, go back, test a couple charts you like. You know, I know, I know a lot of people like saying Amazon's going to go hit new all time highs. You know, so let, let's break that down real quick. Then. Let's clear this chart. Let's look at the all-time highs. So you can see this is the all-time you know chart here with the weekly time frame. So I'm going to mark the, the meat of the bone so I can see right here these last three weeks are definitely what I need to be watching. So let's go look at that. So as you can see, price has already broken new all-time high above 3505 for the meat of the bone right here. You know Now we have to wait for double confirmation. This is not a buyer candle. I'm not marking the top of that. Uh, so 3554 is where you have to double confirm is where is Amazon going to move higher? Is it going to go to 3575, then 3600, then 3625, 3650, 3675, 3700, and so on and so on? Um, you know, and you know, you, you don't know that for sure, but what you can do is prepare, you know, so now I'm prepared. It is already looking good to go to 3550. So now I know tomorrow I can go onto my day trading levels and I can mark Amazon's pre-market high and I can look for calls above whatever the pre-market high is to that 3554, utilizing my bigger and smaller time frames together to make a more um, effective trade plan, a more effective trade. There's very high trade probabilities right there in which we just you know went through. So again, visualizing the probabilities, you know, you're going to be looking for that 3550s above pre-market high. Uh, it ends up breaking back below this, you know, you're looking back to those other pre-market levels and so on and so on. Um, but I just want to show you guys it is not impossible to chart all-time high levels. Uh, but let's get into the next section. All right, so before we get into the very last section of this where we talk about the TA routine, I really want to talk about just one more small tactic I use uh, on a lot of stocks literally every single day, every single week, uh, in which you can utilize on monthly time frames, yearly time frames, weekly time frames, daily time frames. Uh, your bigger time frames though and this is from the perspective of a pattern trader so as a pattern trader i really love being preemptive i love looking for uh, candlesticks on the bigger time frames to open up at certain spots so i can do different things so uh, a really big thing that i like to do and this is just to break it down to super basic mode is let's just call it the the gap strat okay so but the gap strat is just going to be based off of two patterns okay so a big thing that i like to watch are engulfings and then my piercing line slash dark cloud covers so uh, let's just look at this through the eyes of a pattern trader. So you have your engul your bearish and bullish engulfings. You have your bullish piercing line and your bearish dark cloud cover. All right, so these are things that I kind of look for whether I like it or not, you know. So whenever I look at this chart, I instantly see a bunch of different, you know, patterns. So instantly I see a bullish harami. I see a candlestick gapped over in which was a dark cloud cover. I see a bullish engulfing. I see another dark cloud cover, you know, so I see a lot of uh, different patterns and no, 
those aren't all going to play out how I just said they will be. I'm just saying from a day trading point of view, these can help you out. So uh, let's look at this from just a pattern, you know, so a big thing with pattern trading is positional, you know, so no, I would not be looking to just grab puts on this whenever I feel like it. Um, but as you can see, this candlestick started above this candlestick, you know, so this day opened here. So let's look back. So this day opened here, closed here, right? So let's, let's clear that. Next day opened above this. So it gap, it had to have gapped from here to here to even be there, right? So that's what I mean by a gap strat. It gapped up that far. Okay. So that's something I like to notate. Okay. So with a dark cloud cover, I always like to mark my 50% control point of my previous day. And then I like to focus on that pre-market. So I know that Burke B is going to be looking really good for a pre-market breakdown. Uh, so I'll be looking, of course, under my pre-market low, my previous day lows, all that good stuff. So let's mark our previous, I mean, our BB system. Let's mark our previous day levels. We got our pre-market level already and our uh, pre-market low. So right there. <clears throat> so of course, we're going to be looking for puts about under this level right here and for calls above this right here. So being preemptive, we saw that Burke B looked like a dark cloud cover, which is a bearish candlestick pattern. So of course, we're more biased towards puts, but we're going to, of course, still set up a day trade plan for both sides. So um, it looks good for puts under this 280.25 to the 279s. Um, yes, so as you can see, the first 10 minutes didn't really give us a good day trading opportunity, but you could still see um, how this price action will help you in the future. So no, you weren't able to take a good day trade opportunity right there, but you can still see for the future um, how that would help you. So that will set up more day trading opportunities. So right there, no, it didn't up, It didn't end up holding, didn't up, end up giving you a very amazing day trade opportunity. Um, but as you can see, it set up another day trade plan, set up another perspective in which you can look at these charts that way. So uh, any other time you see a candle gap up above something or gap below something, you know to mark one, the outside of the pattern, the control point, and then also go set up your BB system, go set up your pre-market system, your previous day price action. So you can see uh, other tr day trading opportunities. So I would have known below that point right there, that would have been really good for puts. That's actually where price ended up holding all day long uh, for support. So right there no you would not have been able to take puts for a lower play but as you can see it does set up for amazing day trading opportunities so you can see there's a bunch of different ways you can look at these charts so again utilizing your bigger time frames to your smaller time frames uh for this last section i had a lot of people ask me you know how do you how are, how are you using your bigger time frames to help you on your smaller time frames besides you know through my pattern trading techniques and through how i look at that kind of stuff and i i, I link everybody the same thing because i use it the TA routine. If you are not utilizing the TA routine, you are missing out on a lot. So um, let's go look at a couple other, you know, examples. So Apple, let's break this one down. So Apple was an example I showed you guys in which price not only held over its previous day levels, but also its pre-market system came down, gave you a 40% entry and an 80% entry and another 40% entry up here. You know, how, how would you have known to sell somewhere up here randomly? You know, you're above everything. Utilizing your TA routine, you would have had everything you needed. So let's mark some emerging candles. Let's mark our gap range right here. Let's mark another emerging candle here, another emerging candle here. And what I mean by that is marking the tops of my buyer candles on the daily time frame. So I'm going to mark the tops of my buyers, any gap ranges that I see, um, you know, as much as I can see. So, so far we've marked everything. Let's go look over here on the right. And as you would have seen, yes, there was another level in which you could have definitely sold at. There's another gap range right here, actually. So as you can see, though, uh, marking those levels, you, have, you gave you another level there. So let's look at it on the smaller time frame. You know, so after price broke out here, you see how it it also lined up with a bigger time frame level. So that 139, just like I said earlier, it doesn't take away from that level's importance. If anything, it adds on to how awesome that level is, how confident you should be in that level, how strong that level is. So once that level is broken, you can definitely assume calls if buyer volume of course is above average you or you have rising buyer volume you know you want rising buyer interest above a level positioning uh, then you're going to be looking good for calls price ends up pushing up you know what's a good initial target you know you guys hear me say you know every 50 cents every dollar you know your psychological levels but you know it was really cool that i was able to go to my bigger time frame and mark another level in which price tested here on apple let's go look at another example you know amazon when i was looking at amazon earlier we were looking at it from this point of view above that high above that high 
and we were looking at it for calls. You know, you could see it bounced off of that pre-market, held above the previous day high for calls, held above this previous day high for calls, you know, but there really wasn't anything else out here that we could have gone off of with, you know, pure confidence. You know, what else could you have marked? Your TA routine, you know, so let's mark that emerging candle, gap range, emerging candle, zoom in over here to the right. Nothing else over here we can really mark. There's one candle right here we can. And that's about it. You know, you can kind of mark about right here. Now let's go look at that smaller time frame. Now you can see it's a little more filled up than before when I only had, you know, this level, this level, this level over here. You know, we only had these three, you know, areas over here. We didn't really have anything price could go up towards. You know, price ended up pushing up and rejecting that bigger time frame perfectly. Ended up pushing up here and pushing off of that one perfectly. You know, ended up pushing above that one. So, so now you're able to see you know, other levels that have very high significance after those levels on your smaller time frame. So again, you this is what I mean by utilizing your bigger time frames um, to help you on your smaller time frames. You know, what's another one we can look at? Let's go, let's find another one. Uh, Boeing. Let's clear all this. So besides just the, you know, day trading system I teach you guys, the previous day levels, our pre pre-market system levels, <clears throat> you know, what are other levels we could have marked? bigger time frame levels you know let's zoom in emerging candle emerging candle gap range emerging candle gap range emerging candle you know marking more levels in between you know there's another level here there's another gap range there uh, let's zoom back down you can see after price ended up pushing down there is another bigger time frame level here as price kept pushing down there is another time frame level bigger time frame level here so you can see we even were able to point out where price pushed down after this just crazy drop so yeah anybody would be like damn how would anybody know where that can't fell to you know right there price just ended up pushing right off of that level you know where did price push off of when it was trying to hold support it was holding off of that bigger time frame level so now you have multiple targets outside of your smaller time frame day trading system here so um, i really hope all of this helps you out if you haven't already, please make sure to go check out the TA routine. I have tons of videos on this, tons of explanations, a huge playlist on the channel. So uh, definitely check that out. Hit me up about it. Ask me about it. Ask people in chat about it. Um, but I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, this is the fifth installment to the workshop videos we do here. So if this was something you definitely enjoyed, please leave a like and comment on this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.